हेलो एवरीवन आई एम डॉक्टर अनुपम हियर एंड इन दिस सेकंड क्लास ऑफ आवर नेबुलाइजेशन इन आईसीयू लेक्चर वी विल डिस्कस हाउ टू नेबुलाइज व्हाट आर द स्टेप्स टू बी फॉलोड व्हेन यू एक्चुअली प्रैक्टिस टू नेबुलाइज अ पेशेंट लेट अस डिस्कस सो आई हैव ऑलरेडी ड्रॉन दिस वेरी पिक्टोरियल डायग्राम ऑफ ऑफ अ पेशेंट बीइंग वेंटिलेटेड वी विल जस्ट नॉमिनक्लेचर इट सो दिस इज द ईटी ट्यूब this is the humidifier this is the hme filter this is the nebulizer this is the peep valve this is inspiratory valve this is oxygen source this is sensor and filter and this is part of ventilator now we'll discuss how what are the factors that decides an efficient nebulization when uh, first we'll come to the ventilator part what are the optimal ventilator setting that you have to prepare so in the ventilator first because you have to deliver the aerosol we have to have adequate volume of air so tidal volume has to be 8 ml per kg and flow has to be minimum or moderate 40 liters per minute is better because if you give larger flow so there will be turbulence and when there will be turbulence the impaction and the sedimentation will take precedence over diffusion so the alveoli will not get nebulized so the lower the flow the more laminar flow you can get and that will maximize our delivery of aerosol to the alveoli so flow 40 lpm is better third increase inspiratory time make sure the duty cycle duty cycle is the time spent in inspiration is at least 0.5 not 0.25 0.5 means we are using if this respiratory cycle is 4 second 2 second is inspiration 2 second is expiration so you have to increase the inspiratory time so the, for a maximum amount of time the flow is delivered number 4 square wave form square wave form produces laminar flow so the square wave form is desired then we have wave to provide a peep and if you can provide low density gas low density gas will definitely produce a laminar flow but you have to remember if you are giving low density gas like heliox you have to increase the flow and inspiratory time as described has to be increase right so these are the few the things that you have to modify in the ventilator when you are going to nebulize the patient right now coming to humidifier in the humidifier the active humidifier or the heated humidifier or is called the heated humidifier it has to be removed for that time period because because of the hygroscopic nature of the humidifying device the aerosol will become larger or bigger in size you remember the baffle the baffle will trap all these things so the overall delivery of the aerosol to the distal alveoli will be very less so it has to be removed and of course hme filter is a physical barrier also it has to be removed very very important so both the humidifier has to be removed this is very very important remove hme filter remove hme filter correct so larger larger airway is preferred because the smaller the airway the larger the 
is the resistance when the resistance is larger impaction sedimentation mechanism will take precedence over diffusion so there will be less delivery of aerosol to the alveoli so larger airway is always preferred either ET tube or tracheostomy so, however in case of tracheostomy you have to remember to put a T piece and if there is an inner cannula always remove it correct now what happens to the patient respiratory system a patient is suffering from a disease which can decrease surfactant production that will make atelectasis when whenever there is atelectasis the efficiency of aerosolization will be reduced because the collapse or concentrated lung the alveoli will, won't take the aerosol nebulized aerosol so in that situation we have to provide a peep to keep them open you have to treat the disease so that um, surfactant starts producing and there are some studies where they also can provide surfactant from outside right and coming to the nebulizer per se if you see the nebulizer per se so mesh is best jet is commonest ultrasonic is efficient right and it has to be positioned where this is very important 15 centimeter from the y piece this is very very important this is the y piece so, so the nebulizer will, will be at 15 centimeter from the y piece for maximizing the delivery correct and the amount of liquid drug has to be 4 to 6 ml for optimal aerosolization correct so this is about the nebulizer what about the peep because you have seen atelectasis will decrease the efficiency so always use a peep to keep the area open so that the alveoli can be aerosolized so use always peep right next what about the what about the patient supine is best but there is atelectasis upright is worse for nebulization because apex gets more than the base so we have to strike a balance so whenever you nebulize you nebulize at 45 degree condition with a peep along with it right so these are the things that one has to really take care before one starts actually nebulizing a patient right Starting from here, if you take a circle like this, go around and fulfill all the criteria, then the patient will get maximally aerosolized, maximally nebulized with your process. So to sum up, we have to give a tidal volume of 8 ml per kg, reduce the flow, then increase the inspiratory time, put the flow waveform as square waveform, use some PEEP, remove the HME filter, remove the heated humidifier, Place the device 15 centimeter from the Y piece and another important thing is suction. So whenever there is a secretion, that what the secretion will do, that will trap. So there will be more impaction and sedimentation. Right? And also the area size will decrease, so there will be more resistance. So always before doing the nebulization always suction the patient suction of secretion right this is one of the important steps then all larger areas are always preferred if you have a tracheostomy use T piece remove the inner cannula 
if there is surfactant production patient is having ads use a peep treat the disease supan is the best but cannot be done in iso so maximum is 45 degree propped up along with peep and of course mesh is the best j it is commonest ultrasonic is efficient right so these are the few of the methods and technique and steps that you have to remember to nebulize a patient in a standard way thank you very much